Hello, Brother Munro here. Welcome to something slightly different. This is a Munro Design Yards Presents video. And if you haven't seen one of those before, it's where I just build uh, a ship class. And this mini series, there's going to be uh, one every day this week. Uh, and I'm starting with the big one. I'm starting with a Dreadnought. And all of these are set in 1914. So this is a 1914 era Dreadnought 2 for the British. And I think this is a very interesting ship because she comes in at just over, well, 45 and a half million dollars. So she's not cheap by any means, but the Ocean class here is a very interesting ship. So in 1914, the best guns you can get are the 14-inch guns, which uh, and the 13s, which kind of represents the the top of the line dreadnought, super dreadnoughts, which had 13.5 and 14-inch guns um, at the time. The Orion class, for instance. Now I haven't gone for those. I've gone for 12-inch guns. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, you're lacking on firepower, but rather than the uh, eight or possibly ten barrels that most dreadnought sport. I have three, six, nine, twelve. So we're making up for the slightly smaller shell with more barrels, and of course, faster rate of fire. And we're also packing tube powder heavy shells. So these things have punch. Um, they're more than capable of going through the armour of contemporary dreadnoughts. But what makes this ship special? Well, she's got a few unique features. First of all, she can make 30 knots with almost no smoke interference and 100% engine efficiency. And I'll point out this is not even maximum speed of this ship. Could go to forced boilers and get it going even faster. But I thought 30 knots in 1914 is pretty crazy. And you might be thinking, well, you must have sacrificed armor for this. But no, we haven't. We are running with a 14-inch belt and a 6.8 belt extended. The deck is a uniform 2 inches all the way across, which in this era is is plenty, especially considering the whole point of this ship is to close in um, so that the 12-inch guns are able to um, get a lot of damage in rapidly. And with 30 knot speed, uh, certainly able to do that. Um, yeah, this thing is not under-armoured by any means. This is this is slightly enhanced armour compared to a standard Dreadnought of the era. We have electro-hydraulic turrets so that the ship is able to keep the turrets turning as she manoeuvres. This turret, although it doesn't look like it, is actually able to do a complete 360, as is this one. Um meaning that the ship can rapidly reorient her main battery onto targets, allowing her to maneuver um, with impunity. She's pretty well protected with many bulkheads, which are reinforced, advanced anti-flooding system, state-of-the-art armor scheme and torpedo protection, um, state-of-the-art armor, barbette protection, the lot. So she's not by any means an easy ship to put down. Does also have long range, meaning that this would be ideal as a solo operator, and for that purpose she even carries an improved radio telegraph, allowing her increased communications range. Uh, currently in a custom battle this doesn't do anything and it's pretty heavy, but you know, for role playing purposes. This, this thing is... I, I, I'm really surprised by this ship. This ship is is very interesting. I think the only thing that she really lacks is a heavy secondary battery. We've just got some 3-inch casement guns up in here. But those 12-inch guns are more than capable of hitting cruisers and the like. Um, so it's not really an issue. And I don't know. This ship reminds me of the ship I did last week for Taskmaster, which is a 1930s era large cruiser. This one's slightly heavier, but the, the, the setup is the same. I think if you were 
we don't know if the campaign's going to allow us to refit ships or not. But if it does, you know, slightly better rangefinder, maybe a radar system, uh, better, better hydrophone. This ship would be extremely useful late in the game. And you could get the weight in because we're only using geared steam turbines. There's the improved uh, double geared steam turbines, um, which would uh, save weight. So yeah, it's it's an interesting ship. And I will show you she does perform because we have a German rival lined up to go and have a go at. And you can see just like just how effective this ship is. Like guns on target very these turrets swivel very fast and the ship is very maneuverable. Um the turning circle of 939 doesn't make it seem like it, but she does turn pretty well. Uh, the turning rate is good. She can come to new headings pretty darn quickly, uh, especially for a ship of this era. And those guns are able to keep up. I've got a bit of a target lock bug. So here's the um, AI's creation. Which is... Um, interesting but it, you can see it's heading away from us just now so once we get on a closing vector now the other thing about this ship is it has very good sea keeping the pitch and roll are pretty good on the ship which means when well, I'm not suffering from a target lock bug anyway you have pretty good accuracy. Now this is pretty long range for 1914, about 10 kilometers. We've got about a four point, we've got about four five percent accuracy, which is not bad, but we are gonna be able to catch this enemy dreadnought very, very fast. Because 30 knots in this era is crazy. There's the first hit. And as you can see, we are receiving hits in return, but they are not doing very much. We'll just wait for an ID. There we go. So here we have... <laughs> okay, this is not even a challenge. <laughs> but this is the sort of thing the AI turns out. I did test this earlier against a slightly better ship than this. Um, minimum bulk kids, obviously, because it's the AI. 11-inch um, guns, which is pathetic. 21 knots. Like, um, th this is very typical for... Um, this kind of speed is much more typical for this era. i tell you what, what we'll do is we will restart the battle to see if we can get something a little bit more impressive. Never know your luck. Okay, that one could be better. We shall see. We shall see. But again, look, just like that, we're uh, we're able to turn and fire. I think this would be a very interesting. I'm not sure it could replace um, your kind of, you know, frontline dreadnought. Uh, you would still need those bigger Queen Elizabeth style ships with the 15 inch guns. But would you need battle cruisers with something like this around? Would you? Well, I'm going to look at that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look at that tomorrow because um, I'm going to do a little series of 1914 era Royal Navy ships and we're going to build a little bit of a if Brother Monroe's in charge fleet yeah this thing oh this thing's going to sink before I even identify it as you can see really the uh, AI not able to compete with this build at all. And... Oh, no, 
no, no, I want to look at it. Oh, damn. <laughs> 12 inch guns, 26,000 knots. Alright, let's try it. Third time's the charm. Come on, AI. Give me something good. <laughs> Give me something good. Give me something big. Give me your best shot. Okay, that's bigger at least. Plenty of guns. No, no, no. Go, go, go this way. That's more like it. Round we go. You see here the A turret not having to do a complete traverse. The uh, the two super firing turrets still have to do go around the long way, but other than that, and we're already back on target. And ready to start closing the distance. And he's trying to kite away from us a little bit. So range target about 13 kilometers just now. Uh, no hits scored by either side. This is very long range for uh, this era. Down to 12 kilometers now. Yeah, they're definitely not wanting to get in close to us. Okay, that's the first tip of the battle. Um, get the deck extended and only a partial. So, the two inch uh, extended deck, more than enough to keep out whatever shells they're flinging at us. Here we go, the Bayern. Minimum bulkheads, why? Game, why? Wow, okay, this is a very similar one. Similar approach by the AI. 12 inch guns, fast. But look at that armor. Nine inch belt. Oof. This is very similar to our own ship. Let's have a torpedo launcher. So we can test the ocean's torpedo dodging capabilities. It's definitely a more interesting fight, but with minimum bulk as soon as we get a few flooding hits, they're in trouble. Ooh, bit of damage to the superstructure there. Just open up and get all the guns to fire, because we're at a pretty good range now, eight kilometers. Immediately just going straight through their belt, extended. So got a partial pen on the mid-belt, so we still need to get a little bit close to be able to go through that. More extended belt hits. Well, that's the thing, like, ah, oh, there we go, we're going through the mid-belt now. The, the poor old Bayern here has gone for a speed is protection, you know, should be able to run away from anything that can threaten it. But we're actually faster. We're not faster than they are. Took a little bit of a hit on the stern there, but it hasn't done very much damage. Hit through our extended belt. But in return, um, causing quite a lot of damage on the band now. Okay, 
can open up the angle a little bit more. Ah, torpedo. Okay, this is probably going to test the protection as that a little bit more stealthy than I expected. If we go full on on the rudder, see how she does. And missed. So a successful torpedo dodge. Another one coming out, but a miss. Come on. See, now that we're in brawling range, this is very close to three kilometers, they're gonna find this tricky. Because we can, yeah, they can do a little bit of damage to us, but in return, massive problems to find another torpedo. Just going to keep us on our toes a little bit, the torpedoes. But uh, not when they just sink. Oh, we took a bit of a flash fire there, which is not ideal, but the ship's still going. Um, which I think is an even bigger endorsement. So we took a flash fire, um, which is unlucky. It's only a 4% flash fire chance on this ship. And um, the ship was still going. So I think that's pretty, a that's pretty good endorsement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this slightly different video and an extra video for you as well. Um, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye-bye.